Miss Sarah McMahon, MMA, or rising MMA superstar. How are you doing today? Good. Doing really good. All right. Um, you are a competitor in mixed martial arts. You are in the 135 um, weight class. Let, let's start out talking a little bit about your background in mixed martial arts, um, as well as what style do you actually adhere to? Um, I started out um, wrestling since I was 14 years old. Um, I decided to quit wrestling at, in 2010, and then um, even before that, I had already started to become interested in uh, no-gi Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Somebody talked to me about, oh, hey, you should do some striking, you know, you might like it. And I uh, went and hit focus mitts with somebody and played around a little bit, and I just fell in love with it. I mean, it's a really awesome sport. Um, I have a ton of respect for people who did boxing and kickboxing my whole life. So starting to learn how to do it myself, um, you know, it was a really, really uh, intriguing sport, very difficult, uh, very time-consuming. So... That kind of sucked me in, just like wrestling had done years before that. Right. So how, how different for the MMA that you do, how different was it between that and the actual wrestling that you had grown up doing? Uh, wrestling and MMA, for me, are very, very different sports. Um, the first basic ones would be there's no striking in wrestling and there's no... Uh, locking joints and no submissions and no choking in wrestling. So um, I had to basically learn two more sports from scratch. But um, wrestling, I, a lot of the things that you learn in wrestling, like the, the dedication, the kind of like the fighting spirit, um, the conditioning, the takedowns and takedown um, defense, the throws, like all of those apply to wrestling, but you have to really relearn a lot of muscle memory in order to transition from wrestling to MMA. Right. Now, the sport of MMA has evolved, especially in the competition aspect from when it first started to now. Um, example would be with the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, that, that there's a lot of rules and regulations that you actually have to adhere to now that you didn't have to adhere to back when it first started. With evolution within the sport like that, what are your thoughts on the sport in general and actually women being involved with the sport now? Um, I think that the sport of MMA has evolved that when it first started out, it seemed to be um, answering the question, who would win in a street fight, a jiu-jitsu guy or a striker or a judo person or a boxer or, you know, like, it, that's the question they were asking. So they kind of pulled people from only those sports, made it, you know, set the parameters or the rules, and saw who would win, you know, in that kind of competition, who would adapt, what style was the best. But um, eventually, I think it's evolved to is that there's a lot of people who start now doing MMA. They don't do any of the other base sports, and um, they're able to transition and. Uh, between these sports and it's more fluidly like I think it's becoming its own separate sport very much and um, I think it's getting a lot more attention now than it did previously but before it was a lot more um, the, just the die hard people who love to come out of sports and then now it's becoming a lot more mainstream when it gets picked up by different shows so um, it's just a, a different kind of beast <laughs> but um, the women aspect I think that the women are making great strides I mean people are um getting more attention, girls are getting a lot more respect now for their skill sets. Um, it's still, I think the women are still in the younger phases that we're still pulling from various sports rather than just straight MMA people, but I think that it's it's growing. I think the next generation of girls are going to be just like the guys where the only sport they've ever done is MMA, and they know how to do it very well. Right. Now, one of the negative stigmas with the sport that has um, come out is there, there's the stigma that it's nothing but a bloody violent sport. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your views on that stigma? How do you feel about that? Um, I don't know exactly why it's, uh, it's viewed like that because 
we have a lot of fans that watch boxing. We have a lot of fans that watch wrestling. We have a lot of fans that watch jiu-jitsu and uh, kickboxing, you know, and then taekwondo and all these various sports. But then you throw them all together and somehow it's become a bloodbath. Like it, you know, each person can, can appreciate the technique and the, you know, dedication in those individual sports that are Olympic sports, like many of them. But then somehow when you throw them all together, you know, it, people see it more as a bloodbath. And I think that sometimes that's more because it's marketed that way. It shows the highlight reel that has like a lot of really savage hits or a lot of blood streaming down someone's face. So that's the images that kind of like are impressed in your mind. You remember some of the most drastic things, but in many of the fights, it's two people that are very skilled. There's not always that much damage done because the other people know how to defend against the really uh, damaging blows. So it's really more technical than people understand. And it just takes a little bit more watching it. Right, okay. Be being that you are a lady and that you actually compete, and, and also with the stigma that we just talked about, how important is it for you to be a role model within the sport to all the other ladies out there, whether they want to get into the sport or not, and as well, um, your own self-image, self-esteem, and how, how does all that fit in, and how do you all, how do you try to communicate this to someone outside of the sport? Um, I think that I don't really, I don't really try to be a role model, you know, like I really just try to be good at my sport. Um, I guess if I want to communicate anything to other people, it's that there's, uh, it's a very intense sport, you know, it requires a lot of hard work and dedication, um, and you know, it could, you could get injured, but you can get injured in sports just like you could in football, but the role model part, I think, comes with sportsmanship, you know, like respecting your opponents, you know, and um, you know, like bumping gloves or things like that, you know, and being respectful towards their skill set and uh, being respectful towards yourself, you know, like I think previously some girls had gone to really drastic me measures to market themselves and, um, you know, like that's just a different thing. I think that I don't think that good role models would really try to seek out. Right. right. Uh, so, being that what you do is requires a lot of discipline as far as, you know, uh, keeping a schedule to train and actually the training, um, how, how can you apply this discipline to your life? Because obviously you, you have other things you do. Um, how, how do you and how can, how do you advise people to use like this discipline toward life, you know, the mental, mental discipline as well as the, as well as the physical? Um, I think I'll address the, the shorter physical version. Um, it is a great way to keep in shape. It's a great way to gain self-confidence. Um, like people who even just go into kickboxing classes or jiu-jitsu classes, just using your body in a way um, that helps you, uh, I don't know, it would be something that helps you feel more self-confident if you were attacked or if you were in an intimidating situation. I think that it gives you a little bit more courage you know, to stand up for things that you want to believe in. Um, it helps your overall health, um, but the mental aspect that I think it takes into everyday life, for me at least, is that um, I can narrow down all the things that I really want, the skills that I want to gain, even in life, and I can eliminate all the other distractions. Um, another thing that would help in the, um, the mental discipline area would be if you were having a difficult time or you having something that you had to really push through. Uh, having the mental discipline to do that normally in life will, uh, you know, carry over from your sport to your everyday life. Right. Okay. Um, two last questions. Um, the, this, next, <clears throat> this next one is specifically about fighting. Whenever you go into a fight, how do you focus in on that specific match or fighter? Is there a certain... Obviously, there's a mental and a physical as aspect to both. Um, so whenever you go into to a fight, how is that going to affect your training, and how do you actually prepare yourself when you step into the ring? Uh, preparing for a fight, um, usually everything for me is just more skill-based. Like, um, on different opponents, I have, like, 
scout sheets, you know, I know that they're strengths, I know that they're weaknesses, you know, and basically preparing for a fight is assessing what ways I think that I can make this the best matchup for me. Um, and really, really, most of the other time, I'm just focusing on my own weaknesses, building my strengths, and attacking any weaker areas that I have in my own fighting. But um, the last, you know, maybe month of preparation is more focused on what ways they could probably have the best chance of beating me and, you know, circumventing that. Right. Okay, um, last question. Do you have any advice for someone who may be thinking about getting into the sport, whether it's just because of the physical and mental advantages to being in MMA, or if they're actually thinking about joining to actually do competitive sports? Um, I think that my advice would be the same for no matter what the sport was, is uh, don't be discouraged starting out from the bottom of the pile and working your way up, you know, view it as a challenge. Um, push yourself harder than you think you can really go. I, I find, like, for me, there's a lot of personal satisfaction in thinking at one point, like, oh, my God, how, I, I never could have done that, and then slowly working my way to it and saying, man, I, I accomplished this. I am better at this. Like, I improved as a person seeing, like, real-world uh, little goals being met, you know. Um, I'd say trust yourself, you know, uh, everybody's got to take everything a different path, you know, like some people want to learn the physical, like conditioning aspect of it, some people want to be extremely technical in it, you know, and just find the one that feels most comfortable to you and, um, and follow those goals and just have fun with it. <laughs> it's, right. I know it seems crazy to think that uh, getting punched in the face you'd be having fun, you know, right. but it actually is... You take the little bit of bad with the lot of good of learning the skill sets. Right. And, of course, the advantages that you gain afterwards would be outweigh all of that anyway. Yeah. So. But it's not an easy road to eat a lot of humble pie, but right. it's I'm worth sure. it in the end. So anything that is a huge goal and is worth it, all the little bit prices you paid along the way. Right. Understood. All right. Ms. Sarah, thank you for the time, and we shall see you next time. Okay. All thank right. you. Thanks.